Great. OK, everybody who has come along, you're all very, very welcome to the um, uh, virtual uh, open day. Um, and this um, session, which um, lasts for uh, one hour, um, it deals with um, uh, master's programs <clears throat> in engineering, physics and um, enabling technologies. Um, so these are all programs which are inside the uh, College of uh, Science and Engineering. And I am the Vice Dean of uh, Graduate Studies in the, the College of Science and Engineering. And in the college, we have um, almost um, 700 um, taught uh, graduate students and other students enrolled mostly on master's programs. And there's um, something like um, uh, almost 50 different uh, programs in total. So what we're um, presenting here is um, uh, a sample of those, uh, mostly in the um, in the areas related to um, technologies and uh, and physics. And um, just the this is the list of courses which we will be um, going through in this um, in this session. And um, the first um, couple of programs are something called um, structured masters, um, which are a little bit uh, different from the the rest of the masters programs, in that there is. Um, uh, there is a, a larger um, emphasis given to the um, research project. And I'm going to um, hand you on straight away to um, Professor Jerry O'Connor, who's going to talk about the structured masters in key enabling technologies. And maybe he can um, show specifically in the case of this uh, program what the structured masters means. OK, thanks very much, Nicholas. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Jared O'Connor. And so I'm uh, currently the head of school in physics, um, but my interest centers around the laser and the laser is a good example of a key enabling technology. So a number of years ago, I began to think about having an MSc in key enabling technologies and it's an MSc through research. But the key aspect here is that Really, we believe that key enabling technologies can leverage new solutions. And these solutions can have impact. So just to give you an idea of two of those solutions that we've developed through the KETS program. The top picture shows a picture of a new advanced mini factory that we have in our School of Physics. And so this factory combines laser technology with printed electronics, with printed biomaterials. And it emerged from the KETS program a number of years ago where a team of students came and undertook the MSc in KETS. And they asked themselves a key question, what would be the new technologies on which future medical devices could depend? And one of the answers they said was, well, we need to combine the advantages of printed electronics with printed biomaterials. And we'd like to be able to do this in a very scalable way so that whatever we develop, we could bring into advanced manufacturing and, and scale it up. And so that is an example of an output from the MSC KETS program. Another example is um, largely led from the industry pull. So we have some contacts with industry and industry sometimes come to us and they ask, I wonder could a graduate student work on a problem for me? And so one of the problems that was presented to a student was, how can you remove a sea lice from a salmon? Can you use light to do so? And so a student really took on that project and came up with some innovative ways of, of developing a light based solution for the removal of sea lice. And uh, two years later, that led to a startup company called Atlantic Photonic Solutions. And that's the bottom picture there. So really, the MSE in key enabling technologies is all about regional innovation through graduate education. And it's really, it's a program that is based primarily on the research project. That's where 60 ECTS, the modules of which there are six of them, there were 30 ECTS, these credits. And so the whole focus of the program is about demonstrating your research potential over 12 months in topics such as advanced manufacturing, 
advanced materials, nanotechnology, things like photonics, micro nanoelectronics, some life sciences perhaps, and some, you know, maybe connectivity issues or artificial intelligence. So if you're interested in those areas, it doesn't really matter what your background is, but you just want to have a program that will allow you to do some research in a very topical and relevant field. Uh, perhaps key enabling technologies could be for you. So you can search key enabling technologies out or you can find me, Jared O'Connor, at nuigalway.ie and uh, I'll be happy to respond to your inquiry. Leave it at that. OK, thanks, Nicholas. Thank you very much, Chair. OK, so um, we're going to carry on from there too. So and just to remind you that any uh, questions and answers can be kept until um, until the end. Um, so another um, structured master's program inside the School of Physics is the MSc in Astronomical um, Instrumentation and, um, and Technology. So um, I suppose the, the idea the idea here is that there's uh, many, many students are, are very interested really in, in the sort of exciting discoveries that are happening in astronomy and astrophysics. Um, but the worry might be, well, if I do something that's um, you know pure, um, perhaps theoretical, like astrophysics, um, then am I really getting trained for uh, for perhaps a non-academic um, uh, career? And um, and as well as that, there are many students who just want to, to try something, uh, try a research project and see is, is research um, really their thing or, or would they prefer to, um, um, to, to finish up in, um, with a, with a um, university education at that point. So the, the Masters in um, uh, Instrumentation and Technology is based on the fact that uh, modern astronomy really relies on uh, very advanced um, technology and it requires um, it requires people who are skilled in, in different areas such as optics and electronics, image processing, data analysis um, and so on. And so it gives an opportunity to um, to find out about um, modern astronomy and to find out about to learn about the um, instruments that are being used on um, on modern telescopes. And to carry out a, a research project. So um, again, the research component is um, two thirds of the credit in the case of the structured masters, and so the research project is is really um, central. And um, the project can be um, something to from building some kind of a prototype instrument in the in the lab um, to demonstrate uh, a technology or to demonstrate a, um, a type of instrument for uh, a telescope, or it could be. Um, analyzing data that has already been obtained with instruments, or it could be simulation work or um, involving a lot of um, uh, computation. And the kind of uh, uh, modules that you would um, take um, range from modules in instrumentation, astronomical instrumentation um, and optics, um, and also to um, astrophysics. And, um, and then there is a, a range of optional modules which you can take from um, from right across uh, science and engineering. So these can be uh, modules in, uh, for example, in mechanical or electronic engineering, or if you haven't had any um, uh, education in uh, in astronomy or astrophysics, then it's possible also to take um, uh, some of our undergraduate programs in, um, in astronomy. So it's, um, uh, I think the, the opportunities are um, are more um, obvious now than, than before because Ireland has joined the European Southern Observatory, which is building the most advanced telescopes in the world, including the um, 40 meter extremely large telescope, which will be um, built in Chile, uh, ready in about uh, 2025. And of course, we're also, Ireland is involved heavily in the European Space Agency, and we have some um, projects which are, which are going on, funded by the European Space Agency as well. Um, and we're involved in uh, an adaptive optics program um, to build um, an, an adaptive optics system for the um, European Extremely Large uh, Telescope. So we have um, uh, projects which are um, which are aligned with the, our involvement in this in this instrument. Um, okay, that's um, it's short and, and sweet because we have a good few programs to get through. 
And so if um, um, I just say a few words, we don't have somebody from the program here, but about the MSc in, in medical physics. Um, so this is a, a taught uh, program in medical physics. Um, so in this case, it's uh, one third of the of the credits would be for the uh, for the research program, which is carried out over the um, summer at the end of the um, of the year of of courses. And this is um, the first European MSc program, which was accredited by um, the American um, CAMPEP. And um, so just to give a taste for the um, uh, the syllabus. Um, so you have the kind of modules that you would expect from um, uh, medical physics of so radiation, medical imaging, radiotherapy and hospital and radiation um, safety. And as well as that, there are uh, modules covering uh, from anatomy and physiology to um, biostatistics and um, health hazards at work. Um, so you can get more information about this from um, from Mark Foley or from um, Christoph um, Kleefeld. Um, I have their um, their contacts uh, there, so they're in the uh, in the School of Physics. So this is the uh, kind of program that you would take if you were interested in uh, becoming uh, a medical uh, physicist. So involved with the um, instrumentation that um, they have in in hospitals. And if Miriam is here, is yes, Miriam I'm here. I'm here. Yep. Mary. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Nicholas. So yeah, I'll I just hand over to you. <laughs> thank you. I'll just describe this program. Uh, my name is Miriam Byrne, and I'm currently the director of the postgraduate programs in occupational and environmental health and safety. These are very, very long established programs. The HDIP program is running for more than 30 years, actually, so it's it's been around for a long time. So we have we have many, many hundreds of graduates. Um, the programs are highly interdisciplinary. They are at the moment. I am a physicist and I'm in the School of Physics, so the directorship sits in the School of Physics, but it's something that rotates on a regular basis and the course is taught between physics. We deal with the exposure science aspect. <clears throat> My own research area is on indoor air pollution, so I'm interested in exposure to uh, physical agents such as air pollutants. Um, safety and risk management is taught from our School of Engineering. Um, legal studies is, is taught from law and then ergonomics is also taught from engineering and then occupational health and well-being in the programme is taught from health promotion. So all of these disciplines come together to produce this highly interdisciplinary programme. We offer full time and part time options for, for the course. So it's, um, it's, it's a taught programme, so 60 credits of, of coursework and 30 for the research thesis. And um, if you do the course full time, you obviously do it over one year. <clears throat> if you do it part time, uh, typically the commitment is about two days per week in each of two years. And then the research project is done at the end of those at the summer of, of the second year. Um, in terms of uh, people who usually take the program on, uh, most of the people who get involved would have a science background or an engineering background or a nursing background. But that doesn't mean to say that we don't welcome people from a wide range of, of backgrounds. We have psychologists taking the course, we have arts graduates, and we welcome all those people because they, they bring a, <clears throat> a different perspective <coughs> excuse me, to our course. We're accredited by three bodies, as you can see on the slide there. Uh, probably the most significant one is the Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, which is an internationally recognised accreditation body and that makes our graduates employable and, and recognised all over the world. We have a very high employability rate and that really has been emphasised, I guess, in the last year or two with, with COVID-19. Um, so the safety and risk um, experience that our students get now qualifies them to fulfil COVID compliance roles in industry and the exposure science skills that they learn um, qualify them to to kind of deal with infection control roles. So so really our our, our base of employment options has, has really um, exaggerated, I suppose you could say, in the last year or two. It was always very high anyway. So that's just a kind of a quick summary. Um, if you go onto the, the web page for, for the programme, you'll see the, the, the details. If you would like to contact me, I'll put my uh, email address in the chat and I'll keep an eye on, on comments in the chat over the next hour or so. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Miriam. And um, um, now um, we're going on to um, engineering programmes. Um, we're going to have a, an introduction to this from from Will. Will, do you want to start sharing your own? Um, yeah, good, perfect. 
So hopefully that's uh, come up. Um, that has come up, can, yes. And you can hear me. So yeah, the, I'm going to explain a little bit about the Master of Engineering degree itself uh, and then talk to you specifically about biomedical engineering. So the master's program, as it currently is in, in NUI Galway, is, is a one-year add-on which sits within a, an integrated master's program. Uh, so you get four plus one is kind of the terminology we use. In the future, that's going to change. But for anybody who's currently taking uh, in the final year of their undergraduate, this is what you'll see. And so this came about back in uh, 2013, um, mainly in response to uh, the need or the, the definition, I guess, of what a chartered engineer was changed. And so uh, before that, the um, degree that you needed to become a chartered engineer uh, was a bachelor's of engineering degree in Ireland, whereas now it's the master of engineering degree. And this is an alignment that is taking place across Europe uh, where everybody standardized their engineering qualifications. So it's a 60 credit, uh, excuse me, year, uh, 40 credits of top modules, about eight modules or so, and a 20 credit thesis that runs all year. And in the Irish levels, uh, it's, a, it's a level nine. So it's, it's a step up from your level eight undergraduate degree. So uh, Engineers Ireland is the accreditation body. Um, they um, also uh, run the chartered engineering title. So if you want to become a chartered engineer, you apply to, to that body. Um, for those of you who stay interested in civil engineering, chartered engineering is a very uh, important part of your engineering profession. Outside of that, it's less required, but it is always uh, merited and rewarded and recognized as an additional professional qualification. It also is important if you wish to travel, because Engineers Ireland is a member of what's called the, uh, the Washington Accord and other uh, uh, mutual recognition agreements. That means that our degrees are recognized as equivalent to degrees in other nations, such as Australia, um, the US, Canada, India. Um, and this is, they haven't a new map, but there, there's some countries that, that aren't on this map that have been added, uh, particularly around the Middle East. Uh, and also across Europe under different uh, under different uh, recognitions. So if you, I'm not saying that you have to become chartered engineer to get, become recognized. What I'm saying is that the ME degree meets the criteria for chartered engineer and that opens up um, mutual recognition by other bodies to you. So, for example, the engineering bodies in Australia, if they uh, have a requirement uh, about holding an engineering degree, the one that they recognize is now the master's of engineering degree. So that's where this all started and why we ended up with that. Um, so in the future, I, things are going to change a little bit. Um, so for anybody who's currently in third year, um, you would have been given the option to, to opt into this, but particularly anybody in first and second year, you're definitely, this is the, the landscape as it is that you're going to see. Uh, you would make your decision at the end of second year and then decide whether you were going into a, um, five-year stream or staying in a four-year stream uh, and the, the timing of your placement and things like that will change and the length of the placement in the four-year stream actually varies from discipline to discipline this is just for the the biomed we're going to have a four-month placement but other streams it, it's longer than that so um currently uh, an awful lot of our third years um i would say about 85 percent of them have opted into this five-year stream so it's very much becoming the norm so uh, just to clarify as well, in terms of what's the difference between an ME and an MSc, because we have a few of those as well in engineering, similar to the ones that you saw uh, from physics uh, and, and those areas before me. So the MSc is typically a 12 month degree in the School of Engineering, uh, and it's a 90 credit program um, rather than a 60 credit program. So you stay on over the summer and that gives you the ability to do some more credits. We also have a uh, a research degree, which is quite similar to the one that Jer and Nicholas talked about. And um, we call that a Master of Engineering Science. Uh, so in the School of Engineering, similar options to what they spoke about exist. It's not really advertised, but uh, it's certainly available. Uh, and that's 30 credits of taught modules and 60 credits of research. Uh, and it has a duration of about a year and a half to two years. And of course, then if you really love engineering, you can go on and, and do a PhD, which normally takes about four years. A quick note then on the fees. So for the engineering degrees, uh, the fees for 2021 were 5650. And actually, I'm not certain what they are for this year. So I've just left it at the old ones. They're probably a little bit more. Um, and if you're not from the EU, they're uh, about 23,000. 
very important. If you get a first class honours in your undergraduate, you're eligible for a 1500 euro deduction. Um, so, uh, and that's right across the board, not just for engineering. So really recommend everybody keep an eye on that one. Uh, I'll keep going on this tax thing. Uh, the recording is there, so you can come back and, and pause it on this. But um, if you're paying tax in Ireland, it's possible to get relief. I'll just uh, highlight that and you can find out more on the revenue website. I'll, I'll paste that link into the chat when I finish speaking. So then I'll just talk briefly about the Master of Engineering and Biomedical Engineering itself. So our syllabus is really arranged about continuing to upskill you in the areas of biomedical engineering and related areas. So we've got a core area which are really uh, central to the engineering, biomedical engineering degree, things like biomaterials, biomechanics, mechanics of materials, manufacturing, and then getting into the more bio side of things, you've got, a, or, um, you've got advanced tissue engineering and mechanobiology. Uh, everybody will take advanced finite element methods. It's, uh, it's one of our, our strengths in School of Engineering. Then we've got a bit more open uh, general uh, biomedical engineering degrees from other parts of the school and, and from other schools as well in areas like bioinstrumentation. These are new modules that came on stream this year and they're in kind of bioelectronics areas. We also have some more biological things, stem cells, translational medicine, things like that. And also as part of an accredited degree, uh, the transferable skills are very important as well. So we have things like safety engineering or project management lean systems. And this year we're hoping to add in one on uh, sustainability which uh, hasn't been fully approved yet, so I haven't put it in here, but hopefully we'll add that in this year. The thesis then is a uh, 20 credit project. It's uh, run in partnership with the BioInnovate Fellowship Scheme, and it's really focused on uh, uh, innovation around medical devices. Um, so you do the whole uh, uh, scope or range of topics related to a medical device, from the background research, to things like marketing and business, also the kind of fundamental design, uh, prototyping, manufacturing, testing, um, and it's in partnership with BioInnovate, which has spun out a huge number of startup companies in recent years. So we get our, our clinical needs from the BioInnovate Fellowship Program, and they're real needs that uh, need real solutions. And you know, it, it's not an academic exercise or a purely academic exercise. You know, students come up with real viable solutions. And um, I'll just skip forward actually to one of them that's still going from a couple of years ago. Um, you know, I'll just highlight down the bottom here, a news article they've just received, or it was two years ago now, I guess, they received uh, half a million from Enterprise Ireland uh, in funding to keep this idea going. So, you know, we're asking our students to come up with real ideas, uh, real solutions to real needs. Uh, Ted, do you want to speak to this? Um, or will I keep going? Um, yeah, I'll just say just one or two words. So I guess maybe for those who might be joining either from maybe a non-NUIG background or maybe from a non-engineering background, um, we also have an MSc in biomedical engineering. So this is a 12-month thought program. So it overlaps with a lot of the modules that would be delivered on the ME program that Will has just talked about, but it's, it's a full 12-month program. So here we have a uh, structure that's a 30 ECTS um, biomedical engineering research thesis and then we have our taught modules totaling six ECTS uh, split into I guess foundational technical electives and transferable skills and our entry requirements here are a 2-1 degree from an engineering discipline or a closely related, related discipline so if you have you know, base degree with, you know, good foundation in mathematics and mechanics, uh, we would consider you for uh, our MSc program. And within this, you can specialize within a general stream. You can focus on biomechanics and medical devices, or you can also specialize in a newly developed stream, which is in medical electronics. So if, if there's any interest in that, I'll be happy to, to take questions in the chat later on, um, on any queries. Great. Thanks, Ted. So that's that's us from Biomedical. You can contact myself or, or Ted afterwards. And Noel, I think you're jumping in next. Yep, uh, that's great. Thanks, Will, for that. Um, so uh, my name is Noel Harrison. I'm the program director for the ME and the BE in mechanical engineering. So um, thanks, Will, for introducing the, the overall structure of our level nine master's courses here. So an awful lot of what Will said applies here. So really, I'm just going to talk about what's, I guess, unique or, or specific details on the um, ME, ME program. So if you're looking to apply for this program, it's uh, it's code is MEME -ME on the CRM system. So this 
And of course, it's the taught masters, it's the uh, full academic year, basically the nine month course, which is um, designed primarily as a continuation um, for students who have done the undergraduate in mechanical engineering or a closely related engineering discipline in NUI Galway um, or elsewhere. So the class will basically consist of about, at the moment, about half of our class are students that have done our undergraduate and the other half are students that have done other undergraduate uh, engineering uh, degrees or um, mechanical engineering degrees in other uh, universities and institutes and so on. So our course is this is a 60 credit uh, course uh, that 60 credits is broken up into um, uh, three elements, really. Uh, the first 20 credits are advanced core mechanical engineering modules, um, kind of modules such as mechanics and materials, advanced FEA, advanced manufacturing, and so on. They say all the, I'm conscious all of these titles say advanced. It really just means that they are they are follow on from a module that would have been covered in the undergraduate. So they're kind of next level or a step up in detail and complexity uh, and so on from what would have been done in, um, in, in the earlier years, basically, of your engineering uh, course. The second uh, third of the, co of the um, course is a group design project. So the 20 credits of this uh, course comes from a group design build test effort basically where we assemble teams together and based on uh, each, uh, each everyone's individual interests and skills and um, set them a challenge to uh, design something uh, build it test it analyze it over the full academic year and we resource that quite well with uh, budget for, for students to buy and make things and lab space where students come in and, and use our um, advanced manufacturing lab to uh, assemble and test their uh, devices. So the kind of things they work on might be a manufacturing rig, like a, an advanced robotic um, printer, for example, or a novel linear friction welder, or it could be a test rig um, for you know a complex uh, loading scenario for a wind turbine blade, for example, or it could be um, a test rig. One of the projects this year is a test rig for um, evaluation of uh, COVID-19 uh, PPE face masks um, and its uh, effectiveness for, you know, uh, uh, prevention of uh, disease spread and so on. So it, the, the actual topics vary every year and they're usually aligned with um, research interests of some of the academic staff members. Um, the uh, final part of the course, is the final 20 credits uh, is basically a two sets of optional modules where uh, students can pick certain kind of specialities in mechanical engineering and applications of mechanical engineering, um, such as um, uh, energy systems, machine learning, um, turbo machines, uh, combustion and so on, and um, kind of get to, I guess, focus their interest in a certain uh, potential industry where they go on to uh, seek employment and so on. Um, some of these modules will be available to students who have done the undergraduate programs, but um, may not have done those modules in those years uh, because we're, we're conscious that we will have students who have come through our system and students who haven't come through our system. So some of these modules that appear there um, uh, will are taken from our undergraduate programs as well, most mostly the fourth year. And we also have a set of transferable skills, which I think Will mentioned a similar uh, format in their module where we have kind of industry applied modules uh, put together. So um, that's an overview of our program. Uh, any, if you need any more information, you can check out our website, our webpage, it's nuicalway.ie forward slash mechenge. Um, my email address is there on the screen. And um, our, this master's program, it is, as Will said, it's accredited by Engineers Ireland. So if you have an undergraduate degree that's accredited coming into the master's program, then uh, you will um, leave with all the educational requirements to become a chartered engineer. Um, we have one other uh, level nine uh, course in mechanical engineering, that's the master's of science in mechanical engineering. And I'm gonna hand you over now to my colleague, Dr. Ming Ming Tong, who will talk about that. Ming Ming, if you're there, do you want to yeah, yeah. share your screen? If sure. Not, yeah. Yeah, never, not, no. Let me share my screen. Okay, here uh, I am the program director of the Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering program, NSME. The NSME program is a 12 month uh, double nine course 
all, all of the students in this uh, course need to complete their learning by attending and passing the assessment of different modules accounting for over 60 credits in the learning for example through these modules uh, we want our students to complete intensive learning in the fields such as particularly conventional modeling and advanced mathematics as well as uh, developing some mechanical engineering uh, specialty skill set and some transferable skill set. Uh, besides the uh, teaching modules, we ask every our students in the MSME, MSME program to complete a year-long individual research project, which accounts for 30 credits. This overall 30 credit research project accounts for overall one-third of all the credits of this uh, program, uh, uh, which can reflect our highlight to our students in terms of the independent uh, research in this overall year-long program. The overall program of MSME is mainly aiming at uh, international students. Well, of course, our domestic students of, from, uh, from Ireland are very welcome to join this uh, program. Okay, that's all uh, for the introduction of the MSME program. We can move on to the next program. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so if we have a uh, Maeve available. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to share my screen. And I have the energy systems. You can see that? Yes. Great. OK, so um, uh, Rory Monaghan is the program director for this uh, program, uh, but I'm representing the electrical. I'm on the program board representing the electrical content. So um, I, I said I'd uh, stand in for Rory today, who is unavailable. Uh, so in energy systems engineering, there's also uh, an ME program similar to the biomedical and the mechanical program uh, programs that were introduced earlier, and they have it. It has the same general structure. It's a uh, 60 credit. A program over nine months, the academic year. There's contact details for the program director. So if you have any questions afterwards, um, I'll be happy to answer any ones you have today. But you can also contact Rory if um, you need to ask more detailed questions afterwards. Um, and as well as the ME, there are opportunities in PhDs in energy related topics. Um, and you can contact any uh, member of the energy systems. Um, engineering bo program board and um, there's a link there that uh, you should find information on those and um, so the masters of engineering like i said it has the same structure and um, it's 11 9 um, qualification it's 60 ects over one academic year and it le it's recognized um, for chartered engineer status with engineers ireland and the international recognition that that brings um, specifically on the energy uh, syllabus, uh, the structure, like I said, is like the others. There's a, a 20 ECTS project, um, and then there are two modules that are obligatory or mandatory for all, all students, uh, global change, um, and then global issues uh, in agriculture, marine and renewable energy economics. Then for students who have not come through the, the bachelor's of engineering degree, which I think most students on the call are today, um, there's 15 additional mandatory modules. There's sustainable energy, advanced energy systems engineering and smart grid. All uh, are very closely related to, to energy. So giving you the background in energy and then that brings you up to 50 credits. So then you can choose one more uh, module from this uh, advanced technology. So there's specialized technology options here, including some uh, from um, uh, civil engineering, electrical engineering, computational and um, mechanical engineering. So you can choose one of those. And usually students choose one that's complementary to the topic of their project. And then finally, there is five to ten uh, credits of um, transferable skills in things like project management, financial management, and so on. So that's to make you um, 
trans transferable skills or more to make you more employable um, in the industry or indeed to give you um, additional research skills. And um, I won't go through this, but this is a sample of some research project topics when you're looking back. Uh, if on the recording, you might be able to, to uh, have a look at some of those to get a flavour. But generally, there's options in civil engineering, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. So di with different focus, but all with a energy theme, obviously. Um, so just looking at some sample projects, um, this would probably relate more to civil engineering or environmental engineering. Uh, looking at biorefineries in Ireland for forestry residues. Um, so really looking at, at the energy in terms of the energy um, that can be saved or exploited, um, where is the best place to locate a biorefinery in terms of where there's a source of wood. So this is bio for forestry residues. So where is the source of energy and where is it likely to be used? So that's that's the uh, one one example. Um, in terms of mechanical engineering, looking at the aerodynamics um, in wind farms to, to help with optimum placement of wind turbines. Um, maybe for civil engineering, looking at low temperature district heating system modeling and optimization. Um, and then solar PV modeling in Ireland. So optimization then of solar PV uh, farms. And we also do from uh, elect pure electrical engineering uh, topics, again, with a focus on improving overall energy efficiency. Um, and then wind, hydrogen. So there's, we're, we're involved, the different programs of the board are involved in a range of research projects. And generally, we try to link the projects on the ME into um, our, our research. So uh, there's a lot of activity in looking at using wind, um, or well, using hydrogen as a form of energy storage for wind. And um, several of the program board are involved in the Marai Research Centre. And again, there's more opportunities for projects and linkages with the wider uh, Irish community on energy research. So uh, just to summarise, again, it's very similar to the other project, other programmes it's a 60 ECTS ME qualification. Um, and if uh, you're interested, um, I'll, I'll be available to answer questions at the end, or you can also contact Rory Monaghan, uh, whose email is there. So yes, I, I'm the program director for the ME in electrical and electronic engineering. Um, and we have two programs in our discipline, uh, one on, on electrical electronic and the other in electronic and computer engineering. Um, they're both quite closely related. Uh, just the, the focus on the electrical program is more on electrical energy um, and while the electronic and computer is more on software and embedded systems. Again, it's the same structure, so I won't dwell too much on that. 60 ECTS uh, over uh, nine months uh, of, the, of an academic year. Um, and if you've already, um, uh, Will and others have already covered this. For us, we see that it's an opportunity for graduates in electrical or electronic um, engineering. We see that, that our, it leads to our graduates having faster career progression after they leave. Um, and the other re thing, it's an opportunity for specialization in a particular branch of elect electrical or electronic technology afterwards. Um, it's again divided into three areas. There's 20 or 25 ECTS advanced technology modules, 15 to 20 mod, uh, ECTS on transferable skills for either industry or research, working in industry or research, and then 20 ECTS for an individual project. I'm going to start with the project titles. Um, I, I won't go through them again in detail, but generally they follow our research prior, well, our research activities in the, the in the discipline um, so on autonomous vehicles uh, signal processing um, a, a certain amount of uh, machine learning deep neural networks uh, and telecommunications communication systems 
electrical engineering, uh, smart grids, um, and then also activity, significant activity in biomedical electronics and electronic devices for biomedical applications. Um, so the, the advanced technology modules then, they support the, the project topic areas again in um, embedded systems, bioinstrumentation design, universal design for wearable electronics and so on. Um, uh, for the electronic and computer engineering, the options are, are more focused on IT and embedded systems. Whereas for the electrical and electronic masters, it's more on electrical energy, so smart grid, systems modeling and computational methods in energy systems engineering. And like the others, the transferable skills modules cover things like uh, financial management, research methods, technology innovation, things that um, are of interest uh, or will give you um, a, a background that's uh, appropriate for either further research towards a PhD or in industry. So things like lean systems, regulatory affairs and so on. And just some examples of graduate destinations over the past year or two. Um, so companies on electrical, electronic engineering, analog devices, Intel, uh, Jaguar Land Road Rover for autonomous vehicles, Valeo, uh, energy, el electrical engineering, then would be power electronics companies like Traco Power, Thermo King for, I guess, energy systems engineering and also software. Um, and of course, ESB, Airgrid, those types of companies would also be, be hiring. So I think that's it. Um, I'll stop there. So thank you for, for um, the opportunity to present.